If our life is all we get to experience, then it's the only thing that matters. Science doesn't do a lot to make this less depressing. Do the things that make you feel good. Merriam-Webster defines nihilism as a viewpoint that traditional values and beliefs are unfounded and that existence is senseless and useless, or more importantly, a doctrine that denies any objective ground of truth and especially of moral truths. Really, it's not as simple as one definition or even two, because there are many different types of nihilism. Epistemological nihilism is the view that knowledge does not exist or is unattainable for man. Cosmic nihilism is the view that the universe is indifferent to us, or that we are no more special than any other part of the universe. Moral nihilism is the view that no morality or ethics exist whatsoever. Finally, existential nihilism is the view that encapsulates all the others, since it posits that life as a whole has no intrinsic meaning or value. This was the type of nihilism Friedrich Nietzsche was concerned with when he wrote, For why has the advent of nihilism become necessary? Because the values we have had hitherto thus draw their final consequence. Because nihilism represents the ultimate logical conclusion of our great values and ideals because we must experience nihilism before we can find out what value these values really had. We require, some time, new values. Nietzsche had lived in a world that largely rejected God, which caused him to write, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? The world has pretty much continued along this track, and the current result of it is Kurzgesagt, which tries to put a hopeful spin on the despair of the 19th century. We counter existential dread with optimistic nihilism. What do we mean by that? Well, to summarize, it seems very unlikely that 200 trillion trillion stars have been made for us. We became self-aware only to realize this story is not about us. If this is our one shot at life, there is no reason not to have fun and live as happily as possible. This is what I think Nietzsche was getting at when he said that we require sometimes new values. If the universe ends in heat death, every humiliation you suffer in your life will be forgotten. If there really isn't anyone keeping tabs on all of us, then there's no one to remember all the awkward moments you had in elementary school, or the stupid arguments you got into with a friend in high school, or the mistakes you made in your marriage. That's comforting at least, but that's where the problems start. What happens when we start deciding what's right and wrong? Who really gets to decide? Think about this. What happens when a serial killer gets brought to the courts to have his fate decided? Is it a battle of wits, where the criminal brings his morals, and the judge brings his own morals, and the debate about which ones are better? No. The judge is there to hold the killer accountable to the morals defined by the state. In America, we have these morals enshrined in our constitution as self-evident rights, meaning that they don't need justification. For example, everyone has the right to life. When that right is unjustly taken away, the murderer is punished because he violated objective morality. We live in a country where objective morality is assumed for the living, for most people, but we assume that suddenly everything else is subjective. How does that work? If one person says that they should get to live, and another person says that it's their truth that the former person should die, who gets to choose? Who's actually right? If the universe has no purpose, then we get to dictate what its purpose is. If each one of us gets to dictate the purpose of the universe, then no one gets to say that murder is wrong, for example. Kurzgesagt makes a terrible assumption here. The underlying assumption they use to justify optimistic nihilism is that everyone is inherently good, but this is just false. So we might as well aim to be happy and to build some kind of utopia in the stars. That's assuming everyone wants the same utopia. But we all know that everyone has their own view of how the world should go, and that we can never all come together and agree on one thing. Besides, if we build a utopia and therefore all aim toward the same goal, that no longer means we get to decide what the purpose of the universe is, because we'd all be in agreement, and therefore the purpose would be objective, not subjective. This assumption of everyone being inherently good is why they say, Do the things that make you feel good. But where has that gotten us today? We have teachers in schools that insist on teaching young children how to have sex. Should we let them do whatever makes them feel good? No. There's a standard we must all be held to, and that's separate from us. Also, why should we as a species get to decide how the universe runs if, as Kurzgesagt says, We are as much the universe as a neutron star, or a black hole, or a nebula. This seems to be that kind of cosmic nihilism we talked about earlier. Why shouldn't the neutron stars, or black holes, or nebulas get to decide if we're all just equal parts of the universe? 
but no need to fret about that much because it gets answered two seconds later. Even better, actually, we are its thinking and feeling part, the sensory organs of the universe. Ah, so humanity is set apart from the rest of the universe because we can think and feel. This no longer sounds like nihilism. Do you have value or don't you? Human value can be explained like the value of money. Intrinsic value is a meaning or quality that's built into something. It's self-evident. Extrinsic value is a meaning or quality that's placed onto something externally. The US dollar is a fiat currency, meaning that it has a certain value only because the government says it does. It's a representation of value backed up by the wallet of the government and therefore the taxpayers. If they decided tomorrow that the dollar was now worth zero, it would be worth zero. This value is extrinsic, meaning it's been placed on the paper dollar by the government. Gold, however, for example, has intrinsic value. It's a limited resource, so there's only so much of it out there, and it has a certain weight to it. If 500 years ago you wanted to buy a castle, you could exchange a certain weight of gold for the castle and that value of the castle would always stay the same because the weight of gold never changes. It's intrinsic or built into the metal. In the same way, we have intrinsic and extrinsic values. You have the right to life in the first place. No one should be able to take that away from you. That's intrinsic, so it never changes. You can also build up a net worth by owning money and assets, but this can change depending on how many things you own, how scarce they are, and how much everyone else wants them. This is extrinsic or placed upon you externally. The values of good and evil are intrinsic. They are known to us internally. Even if someone is psychotic and doesn't understand murder, we all know that murder is inherently wrong. Kurzgesagt takes the values of good and evil from objective morality and counterfeits them into the subjective nihilistic worldview. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Either we have objective values of good and evil, or everyone can do whatever they want and no one ever does good or evil. They can't both be true at the same time. Now hold on a second. Before you comment down below saying I'm some kind of judgmental, hateful, bigoted Christian, just remember. As an optimistic nihilist, you should know that I'm just dictating the purpose of the universe like anyone else. I believe you have intrinsic value and that life is not meaningless, but that's not my truth, that's the truth. I think you need to see this video to get more information on that. I'll see you next time.